Hello, Melissa Miller here. Thank you for stopping by my exhibit. I am so grateful to have the opportunity to propose my working thesis for a trial run. Thank you to Dr. Jeremy Eckie and the whole Signature Experience Committee for your support and the Research and Creative Expo Committee for helping give us a platform to try out our ideas. I present to you Titian's Venus of Urbino, A New Interpretation. There have been numerous scholarly interpretations of Tiziano Vecellio's Venus of Urbino since Giorgio Vasari named her such in 1548. Nonetheless, there are problems in Titian's hermeneutics and semiology relevant to his time and social climate that places the Venus of Urbino in a genre unique to her and her creator. In short, this thesis will theoretically define Titian's Venus of Urbino as a very personal work for the artist and possibly originally created by the artist for, the, for himself. It will include an idea about the genre of the work as being a very unconventional portrait of a woman representing a vanitas and an allegory of lost love as a commemoration of Titian's late beloved wife, Cecilia. My research is a work in progress, and in my thesis dissertation, I have evaluated several areas of Titian's life and work in nailing down a final thesis. This includes portraiture, symbolism, literary and historical references, analytical similarities of his compositions, and lastly, juxtaposing some of Titian's work with copies made by other artists. Some works which have been lost or newly rediscovered have also been included. My short presentation today will focus on the areas of new evidence, visual similarities between portraiture and symbolic reference. New and compelling evidence. One might consider the Venus of Urbino as another nameless idealized beauty based on patrician and Plutarchian ideas during the Renaissance which was the norm in allegorical compositions during that time. It is well known that Titian used models for his work. A popular courtesan and friend of Titian was Angela Del Moro, and she was hired by the artist as a frequent subject. However, in his earlier career, some academic sources suggest Titian used his mistress and later wife, Cecilia Soldani, in many of his pieces up to 1530, the date of her untimely death. Here on the right is a newly dis rediscovered work titled Titian's Mistress. It is held at the Apsley House in London. The exact date is unknown, but art historians have recently dated it to his mid-career of 1550. But it could easily be attributed to portraiture styles dating from earlier because of its vivid color and stylistic tendencies indicative of his earlier career. The black and white engraving to the left is by Franz van den Vingarde from approximately 1640 to 1650. It is housed in the collections of Versailles and Paris. The print from the Northern Baroque period is after Titian and Rubens. Vingarde was an apprentice under a collaborator of Rubens by the name of Paulus Pontius, Notice the French in the middle slide have, given, have gone a further step and added their title by attributing the title of this work to Cecilia Soldani. A Study in Artistic Facial Features I am convinced that Titian was a master at capturing the individual features of a person. Titian was well known and admired for his exquisite likenesses. As an example related to my research, I believe this later self-portrait echoes the features of this much younger self-portrait or what is thought to be a self-portrait of the master himself. The line of the nose and beautiful beard uh, gives it away as a self-portrait, not to mention the similar hairlines in each. This being said, one might argue that an idealized beauty was only to a degree part of Titian's artistic, artistic style, and he was more apt to capture individual characteristics and flaws of a person's facial makeup. I believe this is the case with the model used for the Venus of Urbino. 
Is it possible Venus of Urbino could be Titian's wife, Cecilia Saldani, who was the mother of his three children? There are no known portraits of Pomponio, his oldest son, and only one attributed to Orazio, his second son, but several are attributed to his daughter Lavinia, his youngest child by Cecilia. I feel there is some compelling similarities between work attributed possibly to Cecilia to those attributed to Lavinia, her daughter. These are new discoveries I'm still working out to add to my thesis and are not yet included in my working manuscript. Here are the portraits by Titian attributed to his beautiful daughter Lavinia, who seems to resemble the portraits in the previous slide that I believe are Cecilia, her mother. These show her at the age of 14 or 15 up to the age of middle age around 35. Lavinia died in 1575, a year before her father. And here is a side-by-side -side of Lavinia on the left and who I believe to be her mother, Cecilia, on the right. To me, the resemblance is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Some scholarly sources suggest Cecilia was also the model Titian used for one of his earliest masterpieces, Sacred and Profane Love, a commissioned marital piece by Niccolo Aurelio and his bride, Laura Bagarotto. The shape of the work also suggests it could have been used as a front panel of an Italian wedding chest called Cassoni which transitions me into the artistic symbolism of the Venus of Urbino. A study in artistic symbolism. One of my main points in my research is how I have tried to unpack the symbology in the Venus of Urbino. One telling piece lies within the chest to the back of the portrait. Cassoni are Italian wedding chests. They are almost always commissioned by the Gra bridegroom as a gift to the bride to transport her wedding trousseau from her parents' house to her new house with her husband. It is symbolic of legalized love and marriage. The Venus of Urbino shows two handmaids selecting garments for the figure of the Venus of Urbino. In the portrait, there are actually two Cassoni side by side in the room, which is part of the traditional furniture suite for the marital bedroom in Renaissance Italy. Cecilia began her relationship with Titian as his mistress. She too was from Cadore, the same village as Titian. She bore him two sons before he married her in 1525. There is an argument she was sick and he married her to legitimize his sons before she died. In my research, I have found that Titian would have been able to legitimize Pomponio and Orazio without having to marry Cecilia. In other research, what little I have found written about their marriage, his cousin wrote to him congratulating, congratulating Titian and saying in so many words, quote, it's about time, unquote. It is my opinion Titian married Cecilia for love and why he waited for um, the marriage is a mystery, but perhaps he was trying to make a name for himself first. Additional bits of symbolism include a dog for fidelity. Interestingly enough, this little tan and white spaniel was a favorite breed of Titian's, and the little pup or descendants of the pup show, show up time and time again in his work. Here the puppy is sleeping soundly and isn't bothered by the person Venus is flirting with in her gaze. Also, Titian's friend Pietro Artino, Renaissance author and poet, poet wrote mercilessly about the exploits and affairs of his friends. On Titian, he remained silent and only says, quote, Titian loves the women. He flirts and says sweet things to them, but he always departs alone, unquote. Fidelity, indeed. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly to my thesis probability, is this small hand bouquet of beautiful pinkish red roses. It is a huge hint Titian gives us for this being a possible vanitas or memorial portrait for his late wife Cecilia. And this bouquet, 
there are a possible total of five blossoms with their foliage being clasped in Venus's right hand. The blossoms are only slightly beginning to wilt and one has fallen away from the bouquet. This could be a representation of Titian's intimate family unit comprising of himself, Pomponio, Orazio, Lavinia, and lastly Cecilia who would be represented in the blossom that has fallen to the red fabric. She died in childbirth with Lavinia and Titian may have seen this as a sacrifice. The colors represented here surrounding the bouquet and in other parts of the composition is significant also. On the left of the detail I have outlined um, what some of the traditional uh, meanings were for colors during the Renaissance. As I continue my research on the Venus of Urbino, I hope I can solidify these hints and back it up with other scholarly sources. In doing so, I believe I will have made a compelling argument for my master's thesis. Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to my lecture. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Creative and Research Works Expo.